Fortnite's Unreal Editor could be absolutely huge and massive within the gaming industry. I see this changing not just the technology of how games come about, but this is going to change the economy of sort of monetizing the mob, letting people make games that they can make money off of, but also allowing developers to make money off of them, similar to what we have seen with Roblox. I want to walk through a handful of things. What is this thing? What is going on with the Fortnite Unreal Editor? But I also want to look at how much they're paying. They're paying how much? What is this? This is crazy. Also, I think this is bigger than my MMO theory. For the longest time, I have said that the Fortnite Battle Royale mode is more than a Battle Royale. It's a testing ground. It is a global social experiment where they're testing all sorts of different game mechanics and things that might go into something much larger than a Fortnite Battle Royale. I always thought they could build the world's biggest and one of the more popular MMOs because their game is so adaptable, so agile, it can run on virtually anything. It's very optimizable, but it seems maybe their plan's bigger than an MMO because this is something where somebody could build their own and then make money off of it. I do want to also look at the procedural tech. I think it's absolutely nuts. This could be the beginning of AI showing up in game development I recently speculated that a long time ago I said that the only way developers were going to be able to keep up with the player habits of the the ravenous more hobbyist styles of plays that we see the way that people sort of play live service games the only way you're going to keep up with that is you would need new technology to help create the content at a quicker speed and at a quicker cadence and I think AI is going to be what brings that about and we may be seeing some of that in the actual Fortnite Unreal editor. So let's just take a look here first in an Insider Gaming article that says, during a grand reveal of the GDC 2023, Epic Games confirmed that Fortnite's Unreal Editor, UEFN, is available to access right now on PC. For years, Fortnite Creative has been a breeding ground for fan-built constructs, but UEFN takes things a thousand steps further, offering talented creators a toolkit that will they can use to create almost absolutely anything. If you haven't seen the trailers, if you haven't seen the footage, it is absolutely bonkers. Fortnite's Unreal Editor is available now on PC, and some outlets are already suggesting it could be set to rival Roblox in terms of overall opportunities for creativity. It certainly looks fantastic, and in a 30-second showcase, the sheer potential of UEFN was revealed to an eagerly awaiting audience. And you can see here just making a dragon... You know, the the level of detail is phenomenal. And I'm going to let this thing just kind of loop down here so you can see what it is that we're talking about. The UEFN has officially launched as an add-on to Fortnite and is totally free to install and play around with, provided you're on PC, of course. However, it's worth noting that Fortnite Unreal Editor is not just for the technically weak or for the faint of heart. It's an intense, detailed, and complex application that can quickly become overwhelming to inexperienced users. Now, recently, they're saying that we reported on the all-new creator economy mechanics that would be coming to the Fortnite ecosystem. In a few screenshots posted on Twitter, it was revealed that Epic Games intends to have creators earn money for player engagements on their custom creation. So this is designed to be something where people can actually make money for what they create. And it's a, it's a, it's it's potentially a significant amount, but I'm not actually sure. The crazy thing is just how much Epic Games is setting aside for this. This was expanded on by Epic Games, and during the State of Unreal keynote speech at the GDC 2023, the developer confirmed that 40% of net revenue from the in-game item shop will be placed into an engagement pool. That, that's 40% of their total global revenue from, from Fortnite. There's another article here that, that states that, that 40, they, they back actually in March of, of uh, 2023, March 1st this year, they began reserving 40% of that revenue. So they're talking about the net revenue from the game. They're not just talking about like, oh, if people spend money while they're using your game. Now, there will be regular payouts made 
to the creators that have taken the time to build custom islands and the amounts will be proportioned based on the level of engagement that those creators secure. Now, that's going to be something that I'm sure they'll be running reports for. They recently pushed out an update about the creator code thing. If you ever use support a creator code or you spend money or buy V-Bucks, use code Lono. Uh, but they're going to push that out of the uh, the creative area. I guess you could make stuff and like promote your creator code in there. I don't think they want you double dipping. So if you're getting engagement and you're getting paid according to that engagement, they want that to be the primary means. So they're basically saying right here that the supported creator program that underpinned Creator Economy 1.0 remains, but is returning to its roots as an affiliate marketing program for streamers and social media content creators. We've removed the supported creator uh, device within Fortnite Islands to keep gameplay focused on fun. Players can now show support for their favorite creator's island simply by playing them. So they're they're removing that sort of, you know, almost like, again, like a double dipping and kind of crossing things over. So to me, I think this is an enormous step within the realm of creating a new economic structure within games. Roblox has done something that just seemed almost unheard of years ago and it's going to become more standard and clearly epic trying to get in on the ground level and as i said this is far bigger than my mmo theory now i want to look at the procedural tech that is in these tools because it is actually crazy ue5's new procedural game building tools are a little impressive so epic's new ue5 tools allow game devs to make sweeping changes to game environments with only a few minor tweaks now keep in mind ue5 is the backbone of Fortnite, and so the procedural tech that they're putting into the Unreal Engine is stuff that's going to start to impact game development. This is all kind of tied together. They're doing these showcases to just show off just how far things are coming. Epic has just announced some new procedural tools headed to Unreal Engine 5.2, the next build of their ever popular game engine. These allow game developers to build out game worlds with a small sample of handcrafted models, leaving the rest to Unreal Engine 5 to procedurally generate. This is crazy. Where do you see some of this? Epic's VP of Engineering, Nick Penwarden, calls the feature pretty cool. (laughs) That's an understatement. As it gets a round of applause at Epic State of Unreal event, and that seems bang on the money. It is pretty cool as you watch a game world pop into existence or a landscape molded in real time. In the stream, we see a designer pop a large rock formation into the center of a creek bed and logs automatically connect this to the surrounding environment. The cool thing is it communicates with everything with the other nearby procedural elements in the scene like the creek bed pen warden says a designer comes by and wants to direct the player to drive to the left Jacob the epic developer controlling the stream can simply move the assembly to the right and everything updates to accommodate this change you can see right here what they're talking about so you have like this sort of area in the center and they just slide it over i press a button and everything just automatically does what it's supposed to do so you could see the water flow happened all the lighting all the shading all the shadows all of the 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 foliage all of the things connected just sort of go where they're supposed to go and then they drag it back out to the center and everything reacts accordingly So you can see here, move the rock formation back, and it goes back to the way it was originally, though not exactly. It's similar, but as it's procedurally generated, the log is in a slightly different position. So it's essentially doing the work for you. It's enabling you to create an environment and just sort of have everything around that do what it's supposed to do. So we started by handcrafting that original part of the level and set the visuals and art direction for the entire piece, then build out procedural tools that allow the team to create a much larger play space much more quickly. The same procedural tools allow for larger sweeping changes to the game world, including mass deforestation and reforestation in quick succession. In an impress- It's an impressive feature, not the least bit because Penn Warden explains the 4KM by 4KM play space is made from a 200 meter by 200 meter square in square hand built by the developer. The rest is made by Unreal. You got to grapple with what they're saying here. They went j- j- just a square, a 200 meter by 200 meter, created a 4,000, oh no, four kilometers by four kilometers play space. Th- that's insane. 
So you you can like now obviously you're gonna you're, this is gonna lead to some of the uninspired things that we've seen lately. Some of the things that like Forspoken was charged of, and even like Sonic Frontiers of. It doesn't look inspired. It doesn't look like it has an identity. It looks kind of like a set piece. I'm curious just how unique and handcrafted a procedurally generated space could feel, but the fact that they could build areas that quickly, basically making something this large from something this small is is just absolutely phenomenal. We've already done some reporting on ray tracing. One of the leaks around the PS5 Pro indicating that they want to uh, increase uh, the speed with which ray tracing happens, and that's likely in response to developers. Sony has really made a lot of moves to make the PlayStation easy for developers to build for. Well, ray tracing is going to become much more popular with developers, not just because it's pretty, but because of the automation. It does things for them. It creates a lot of the lighting uh, and the physics and how the lighting and all the algorithms work. It's all done for them. They don't have to like go in and hand place and hand do all of it. And now we're talking about being able to basically generate areas from incredibly small spaces. These features are headed to Unreal Engine in version 5.2, and Epic has announced that a preview of the new engine is now available, certainly something that could be a big time saver for developers in the right hands. One of the things that we've been talking about in some of my streams is why is everybody going uh, to Unreal? Like, what's, what's the reasoning for that? Why would people all be switching to Unreal 5? I think we're starting to see a glimpse. I really, really do. I I think it's going to allow developers to trim down on time, but also leverage tech. I continue to think that AI is the future of building games efficiently, faster, larger, staying up with player behavior. We already saw the procedural generation affect Diablo 3 with its riffs, with No Man's Sky. There's so many games that have used this tech in such small ways, I don't even think we've seen the tip of the iceberg. Now we're talking about AI procedural generation and that level of tech coming to game creation that could allow them to build entire worlds in the blink of an eye. The question is, will this be harnessed in a way to make games that feel unique and handcrafted, or will it start to feel like some of the AI art that we AI art that we've seen out in circulation? Time will tell how this gets harnessed, but for now. The future is bright, and Unreal is at the center of it. If you like these videos, make sure you hit subscribe, the bell button, and all the other things so I can see you in the next video.